So I'm making you a video today that's a little different just to show you kind of how do they come up with models for some of the things you see on TV or when you're reading um, the news or whatever. So here I just have an article I got from Apple News, I believe, that was about the um, UK deaths from coronavirus. And it was just one that was really easy to read, which is why I pulled it up. Um, so you can see that they told you how many deaths starting back in March and how it has increased over time and they went up to April 7th because I sent this to myself last week and then you can see some numbers down here too. So I thought we could look at maybe how could we do this. So the first thing I thought we would look at um, would be the graphing calculator. Um, so what you can see, what you can see, let me make sure it's doing it. Um, I just want to go back to a uh, home screen. All right, so here's my home screen. Um, I'm just going to show you like on a normal like screen to see like nothing's really going on yet. But what I would like to do is plot that information that I just had over from um, the article. So what I do is I go to this button that says stat, which stands for statistics, and it says edit. So what I did is I entered the dates of what they gave. And if you went back and looked at it, like on March 1st, there was one death. And by the 10th, there was 10 deaths. By the 20th, so this is March, there was 177. Um, because I'm putting this in my graphing calculator, it doesn't really have a way to track after March 31st. So then I just added. So this is um, April 3rd, think 31 days plus three more. So there we go. And that's how I got up to um, April 7th. So these are the numbers that were in the chart that the article had. Um, and then I just put it into list one and list two. So I just pushed these, entered, and then I went over to this. So what I would like this to do is I would like this to graph. So the first thing I have to do is over in the Y, I'm just gonna push up and push enter and it tells it plot points. So we'll put these points on. Um, there's a little problem when you look at these numbers, they go from one all the way up to 6,000 and I don't wanna have to worry about how to change the window. So it's really awesome. I can hit zoom and you see number nine says stat. So that says it's going to look at the statistics entered and it's going to come up with a custom window, which is awesome. So I'm going to hit that and you see this nice little window it came up with. So these are the values that I put in. Um, all the tick marks aren't on there like you can see on the vertical axis. We can go back and put it, but it doesn't matter. Um, so here's what we have. Now, we've discussed different types of functions this semester. So we know what a line looks like, like it would be straight. We know what a parabola looks like, it would be curved, so I'd have this symmetry. Um, but definitely, you can tell this is exponential. So I would like for the calculator to tell me what function actually models this curve. So to do that, let's just go back to a home screen again. And again, I hit on stat. So stat is a really important function in here. And usually it's pretty easy to figure out what I should hit. So notice that this says edit, we did that. Now we'd like to calculate. So I'm gonna hit calculate. And then you can see the choices in here. Linear, quadratic, cubic, right? And remember we said we think it's exponential. So I'm just gonna click down so I can see the other choices. And there's one for exponential. The regression says it's gonna come up with a formula. So I'm gonna push this and it says, okay, where did you put the information? So it's making sure these are the list it should look for. So yes, in list one and list two. Um, and I'm just gonna go down until I hit calculate and it immediately pops up a function that models this equation. So this A coefficient would be around one and then this base would be 1.267 um, and then to the X. Now that's a lot of numbers. I don't wanna have to write it down. So we're gonna do this little trick. This is a little harder, but you'll be fine. We're just doing it to see how things are done. So I'm going to push this Y and I want it to bring that equation in. So the trick to that is I have to hit VARS. So that's variables. But then again, I think just read. And when I'm reading right here, weren't we just doing statistics? So I'm going to push five for statistics. And then when we were doing statistics, we were looking for an equation. So I'm going to go over to equation and we did regression. So I push enter. So that equation that it just figured out, it brought into this screen as my y function. So now I'm gonna hit graph and you're gonna see that it put the two things together. So what happened is the calculator used the data that we gave it 
and it came up with a formula based on that to say this looks like what it's modeling. You can see it's not perfect. We never expect the model to be perfect, but you can see how it started slow and had that quick increase over time. The more data, of course, usually the better of a regression equation we could get. So there was one way to figure things out, but I'm not thinking all of you have a graphing calculator, which is fine. So the second thing I thought we would do is we would look at um, Excel because most people have Excel and I know you have it as part of like your student um, package at, at the college. So here's what I did is I took a homework problem we've talked about. Um, so we actually did it in class today where it talked about logarithmic um, modeling for the gross domestic product and this was um, starting the year 2006 so you would want to make sure you look down here it says after 2006. So what I did is I just said, well, 2000 is one year. So that's why there's a one here after 2006. Then 2008 is two years, 2009 is three years, 2010 is four years. Notice there's a jump then that goes to 2014. So that's where I have eight. And then 2019, um, I put 10, that should actually be 13. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so one year, two years, three years, four years, then eight years, and then 13 years. Okay, so then I put in the numbers it gave me, 15.9, 16.2, 17.3, 17.4, 17.5, 19.3. All right, after I have that all in there, I am going to highlight those cells, and then I'm gonna tell it to insert, and actually I might need to move my screen around. Let me see if I can move the screen so you can see it. I don't think it's going to do it. So I went up to the top and hit insert, and then I hit chart. So the chart I want is not like a column chart or a bar chart. Or I, I want a scatter plot. I just want those numbers put on. So here's my scatter plot. I'm going to put it over here so we can see it. Um, and you can see all these little numbers that are put in there. So from this scatter plot, I would like it to tell me some kind of um, line that goes with it. So I'm going to sit hit. I'm going to hit add trend line. So notice what I did is after I hit the scatter plot and it was in there, I just right clicked um, and that's what brought up the trend line. So I said add trend line. All right. So the trend line will give me choices if I want it to be exponential. doesn't look any weird. Linear. But logarithmic is what um, it said that it would be when we looked at it earlier. Like that was the whole premise of the problem. So we're going to look at theirs. And I want to display the equation on the chart. And, and let me see, I might move it around actually, because I don't know that you can see it there. Format trend line. Let's see if it'll say where I can put it. Maybe I can just pick it up and move it again. All right, there we go. So here I want you to see that the trend line it came up with was 1.2014 ln of x plus 15.7. And when you look down here at the problem from the book, it says 1.2 ln of x plus 15.7. So it is a very simple thing to have um, Excel do this for us. And from there, then you can make projections. Part of the hard part, of course, is deciding, is it a log, is it exponential, which is why we study it, why we look at it and make this decision. For this one, I think it's a little tough because there were gaps in between it. And to say like, well, why did they think logarithmic over line um, and it displayed a little weird here too, sorry, but here's what I see. Do you see it's always increasing? So 15.9, 16.2, and then these three numbers that are really close together, and then I have this, which is bigger. It shows me it's increasing, but it's increasing really slowly, and it's not consistent. So I can see that if I keep looking, I wouldn't have the same number between each two points. Definitely this year shows me and this year shows me that it wasn't the same. So it was increasing a lot at first and then it kind of slowed down later, which is why logarithmic would be a good choice for this data set. Um, but I do think that's the hard part, that's the good part. And that's the part that I kind of try to stress in class is what are we looking at so we can see how this data could be modeled.